Congratulations on taking delivery of your new worldwide steel building. We know how excited you must be to assemble your building, and it's important to pay extra attention to the next few steps to ensure your assembly goes as smooth as possible. The foundation is a crucial step in your building process. Your foundation engineer, whether it be Worldwide Steel or your independently contracted engineer, will determine the diameter, length, and type of anchor rod you'll need to use. Worldwide Steel does not provide anchor bolts for your project, and these must be supplied by you or your contractor. For most building projects, you'll have the option for your foundation supplier to cast the anchor rods in place when pouring your concrete or to install anchor bolts after the concrete has been poured. Your custom building has been drawn and engineered for a square and level concrete pad and or piers. Problems with the foundation will lead to problems with assembly and poor overall building performance. So please ensure your foundation is correct before assembly. The paperwork delivered with your building has all the information for the layout and components of your specific building. Remember, all buildings are custom made to how the customer designed it. In this example, we're referencing a 40 foot by 40 foot tube leg building with post installed anchor bolts. All buildings are drawn on a grid system or grid lines as they're commonly referred to. When laying out your columns, the W1 drawing or column layout plan will give you measurements for proper column placement. Columns are labeled at the intersections of the truss lines, the numeric value highlighted in yellow, and the column lines, the alphabetic value highlighted in green. The trusses in your building kit correspond to these intersections and are labeled accordingly. The dimensions and grid lines shown on this W1 drawing represent the center line of the columns and base plates at each location. Columns that are specific to a certain grid location, such as grids A and 1, will be labeled as A1. If you receive columns with no labeling, those columns are typical and can be used at any main building column location that does not have a specific labeled column. For the building in this example, the measurements are as follows. Measure one half inch off the sidewall edge of slab and make a mark. This will be the outside face of the tube column as well as the outside edge of the base plate. Measure three and one half inches from the sidewall edge of slab and make a mark. This will be the center line or grid line of your tube column from the side wall. Measure nine and one half inches from the end wall edge of slab and make a mark. This will be the center line or grid line of your tube column from the end wall. You've now identified center lines in both directions for column A1. Repeat this process for each of your building corner columns. To find center for the remaining columns, run a chalk line along the side wall at the three and a half inch measurement at each corner column and snap the line. Then measure from the center line of the corner column to the center of the next column line. Per our W drawings, this building's dimension from 1A to 2A is 10 foot 0 inches. Mark this location on the concrete. We encourage the use of a template for accuracy when laying out your anchor bolt locations. Worldwide Steel does not provide this template, but it can be easily made out of plywood to match the base plate dimensions and hole locations shown on your foundation drawings. Once your measurements have been pulled, align your template to center and mark where your anchor bolt holes should go. The anchor bolt holes will align perfectly with your column holes. At this time, remove the template and drill holes as required for anchor bolts. It's good practice to utilize compressed air to blow out any remaining dust in the drilled hole. Use the specified anchor bolts and recommended epoxy. Reference the epoxy manufacturer's instructions for the depth, diameter, and quantity of epoxy to use for each bolt. Once the epoxy has cured, position the 1A column at the 1A outside corner intersection. Stand the column upright and make sure it's level and square. Once it is level and square, anchor it down. Continue anchoring the rest of your columns according to your specific W1 drawing. 
congratulations on taking the first steps to installing your new building. These steps are crucial to a successful build. So take your time, plan accordingly, and reach out to your worldwide steel buildings rep if you have any questions.